Hello everyone, and welcome to game number three in this best of three semi-final match between PB Head and GameSlayer989. Game one going over to GameSlayer, fairly simple, straightforward victory, just had a solid lead over his opponent the entire game. Game two going over to PB Head with a lot of solid market manipulation, knocking his opponent round sheerly through the force of his own economy. Very interesting to see that getting played out for game number two. All right. In this game number three, however, we have PB Head scouting mostly to the north and to the east. He's found some aluminum, he's found some silicon, and he's found some water. Only just now managing to spot the iron patch that Game Slayer had discovered by scouting west at the start of this game. Both players going to be founding right in the middle of this iron patch. A bit of an interesting decision. And we see PB Head, in fact, valuing moving into the Aluminum at HQ level 1 this game. A bit of an odd decision to me, knowing that he'll need to find an advantage somewhere. I suppose what's happened is Game Slayer, learning his lesson from last game, gets founded immediately and spends all of his resources on purchasing up that Aluminum early. And so PB Head knows he's going to have to go ahead and establish that just to even get into HQ level 2 at this stage of the game. Very interesting move by Game Slayer. It's the kind of thing advantage you can take when you are lucky in that initial scanning phase and get to go ahead and found first. So PB, he's stuck on HQ level 1 for the time being. He is going to manage to upgrade fairly quickly. He's already got that valuable aluminum production established, but he's having to spend just a bit more on that upgrade than his opponent did. Two claims left for PB. Having found it second, he does get that one extra claim. Still has that nice boon going his way, but he is already playing catch-up so far this game. Both players establishing very, very similar economies so far. PB Head with a little bit more silicon getting taken overall, about twice as much as his opponent. Very similar amounts of aluminum getting taken, we can see. In fact, very interesting to see Game Slayer taking this medium rather than this high for the time being, but eh, to each their own. And just a little bit of water for Game Slayer, with PB Head still has one claim left. We'll have to see what he does with that. Geotherm auction going up in this northwest corner right now. 24,000, 28,000, still very reasonable amounts to pay for this tile. It basically just gives you that extra claim, and we could see all the difference that made last game where PB Head was not developing a significant amount of debt despite both players going into different auctions. And Game Slayer, he got knocked out much faster than he might have otherwise been because he forewent power for so long. All right. So PB Head going to be the one to come away with that. Geotherm's also very reasonable, usually, in a scientific versus scientific match. They protect themselves fairly well. Your opponent doesn't really want to commit to the resources, to attacking it because you're a scientific player and he's scientific and he can only mutiny it for one minute and it's just it's all just kind of awkward it's very expensive and on top of that steel is usually very very cheap so the geotherm is a lot cheaper in this 1v1 than it might be in some others all right there guys we do see some black market purchasing going down it looks like out of game slayer once again Heavily valuing that new claim. He can get away with that a bit better, I think, this game, because he was the first one into a lot of these resources. He's going to be getting the slightly better prices on them. And so maybe he can get away with that pushing to that extra claim for just 4,000 funds rather than for the 28,000 debt that PB had to pay for it. So PB, just one claim ahead at this stage of the game. And let's see, Game Slayer has already purchased into 56 glass that he's going to need for an upgrade. Just waiting on the steel and the aluminum to roll in at this point. PB Head, on the other hand, he does not have any of the glass he requires yet. And he is instead waiting for that to come in from his glass furnaces and even sending a little bit of it early. I imagine just to make sure he's got the oxygen secured to keep those glass furnaces running. Both players kind of just in that waiting game that you get to at HQ level 2. Not a lot to do. You don't have any real funds left over. At this point, you're kind of just trying to push to that Scientific HQ level 3. Expanded. Game Slayer is going to be the first one there, as expected. No big surprise. We're going to have to see where he commits his tiles. One interesting thing to note about this game is both players going scientific Scientific in this left corner. Expanded. But the water is all on the right side of the map. So it looks like Game Slayer, he's going to be one to choose to forego his scientific bonus. He's instead going to throw down farms, interestingly enough, right next to his base. Whereas PB Head, he says, no, I want to be able to rip water right out of the ground. I don't want you to be able to drive water prices insane by the fact that you have already secured water production 
And so I am going to take advantage of my scientific bonus and I am going to secure those water tiles across the map. A bit of a questionable play out of Game Slayer for one reason in particular. He has consumed an additional 60 glass with these three farms. 60 glass that PB is currently in the process of producing, and that's potentially going to be just a little bit more money in PB's pocket. On top of that, we can see farms about equal to reactors right now, both of them making about $8 net revenue at the moment. And so maybe it would have been a bit more prudent to go ahead and throw down those reactors instead. PB had going to take that pirate auction for 24,000. He is the one that has resources to steal away with these reactors. Not too surprising we're not seeing it thrown down yet, but if these reactors actually come online, it wouldn't surprise me too much that over the course of that first fuel shipment is when we might see those pirates drop. It should be noted that PB had having taken both auctions so far has about 50,000 more debt than his opponent, and that's going to start racking up quite rapidly as we hit those uh, day changes and as we get this 10% interest coming in continually. So up to 81,000 debt compared to his opponent's 33, his one advantage, once again, this geotherm. Not paying a whole lot for power, more than last game due to having the reactors down in addition to the steel mills, but still not in the worst spot ever. Water becoming very valuable very quickly. You have to wonder if it was a strong decision from Game Slayer to go ahead and move into these reactors. When, of course, pirates are a possibility in just a moment now. And we're going to have to see what happens based off of those. Interestingly enough, there was a mutiny from Game Slayer. I believe he managed to steal a significant amount of glass away from PB very easily with this mutiny. Not sure exactly what the quantity is, as I can't go back and check super, super easily. PB has been on his game this game, kind of sending the glass continually when it wasn't quite full most of the time. But it's possible that he got a bit wrapped up in his own head. Didn't manage to catch it every single time, and Game Slayer got a significant steal from that mutiny. Both players hitting HQ level 4 almost simultaneously. Very interesting how they're managing to keep up with each other very effectively. Finally, the pirates go ahead and come down for PB exactly as expected. As this oxygen and fuel is starting to get sent, I imagine it came down right around the time fuel was coming through here. I don't think it managed to actually secure any away from Game Slayer. However, those will continue to sit there and will continue to steal those very valuable 70 and $100 resources away from his opponent. Game Slayer actually also apparently having aluminum intercepted, which is not exactly what PB wants, only worth $15, but once again, you continue to take what you can get. Game Slayer with his HQ level four has moved into a little bit more power and some additional water. These are probably some of the most valuable tiles on the map right now, making almost $100 a second. We actually see an underground nuke come out from PB in response, knocking the value of that tile down from $95 to five. So that's pretty nice for PB. Also stealing away a lot of aluminum with these pirates. Whereas PB for his level four, he has also secured significant water, including a high water tile for himself just a bit farther away. And he has also secured additional power a very, very valuable solar panel is going to be helping raise his stock price and kind of keep him in this game where he's been fighting for so many auctions and trying to take small advantages off of those. Speaking of auctions, another claim auction comes on up. I once again expect twenty-four to 28000 for these. That's the typical standard that we see these days. However, Game Slayer apparently kind of afraid of debt. Maybe not even afraid of debt. Maybe just wanting PB to get pressed into debt quite significantly so he can go for the punch a little bit sooner before hitting HQ level 5 and maybe when PB isn't quite ready for it. PB has the option to go ahead and upgrade at this moment if he wishes to. Game Slayer hasn't quite pressed there that yet. Did not have that glass available and instead is going to be relying on selling off this water and selling off this fuel to pull it off. So PB Head has managed to use these auctions to a nice effect of pushing to HQ level 5. However, his stock price is still very low, and Game Slayer has decided to go on the offensive rather than shifting into HQ level 5. He's secured two stock already. PB Head is going to have to defend himself. He has also secured two of his own stock, and I would not be surprised if he commits to making sure he has that stock secure so he can use all of these advantages he's been acquiring to their greatest effect. Because the longer the game goes, the more each and every one of those extra claims ends up being worth. All right, PB secured three of his own stock. He's sitting on about $5,000 right now. A significant amount of water still 
not too terribly much. Got a lot coming in. Everything is still worth a reasonable amount of money, but nothing is worth a ridiculous amount of money. Glass being some strong production right now, it'd be interesting to try and figure out which of these tiles is actually the single most valuable. I have a feeling it's still this water pump at plus $170 a second right now. So that's, once again, a nice advantage over to PB. We can also see that Gameslayer has been struggling to use these farms to their greatest effect for most of this game, purely due to the fact that water has been quite expensive and neither player has really bothered to knock it all the way down. They are making some amount of money now, but for a long time, those have just been sitting there off out of pure necessity. Gameslayer has pushed HQ level 5, caught up to PB in terms of that. PB has also managed to secure about half of his own stock. Gameslayer is securing three of PB's stock. He's going to want to push more into that, if at all possible, but I don't see that happening. We also see it looks like continual EMPs raining down on Gameslayer from PB. He's just shutting down those solar panels, shutting down those most valuable food tiles that Game Slayer has, and making sure that he'll be able to likely move into food and get the benefit before his opponent does with these three farms he has claimed off to the right side of the map with his HQ level 5. Interestingly enough, PB has also been sitting on chemicals this entire time. We'll have to see if he manages to take a true advantage off of that. Kim is not worth a whole lot, but worth a little bit. Slant drilling is actually a pretty big deal right now. I believe both players have access to one or two tiles that could benefit from slant drilling. And on top of that, if any additional claims happen to be purchased up, which is very reasonable considering the new claim is still only worth $6,000 right now, it'll leave them a bit more free to take that tile exactly where we can want, they want to. In particular, we can see this farm suddenly jumping up in value to $114 right now, no longer needing to pay that water price. I have no idea what happens to this truck now, by the way. I'm a bit curious if it's going to send itself back out or not. Somehow, I just I just don't know. Let's watch. The trunk lands, and there it goes back out. Interesting. Okay. Good to see, though, but now that he has to come all the way back home. It's so sad for him. Such a long trip. All right. All of PB's stock has finally been secured. We can see PB still owning more of it than Game Slayer does. So that's a decent move on his part, but he still has a long way to go before he's got this game finished up. I imagine we're gonna have to see something like an engineering lab, a hacker array, or an off-world market from one of these players to truly secure it as prices should be mostly on their way down at this stage of the game with the sheer amount of production that's been established all over the place. So that said, let's go ahead and look into what an off-world would be worth this game. It looks like an off-world would actually be quite nice to have considering food is up to a price of $591. So I don't know for sure if either player is going to make one of those moves, but it definitely is a possibility this game. We also see that despite the dust storm, PB is finally going to transition his worthless aluminum tiles into solar panels. Try and finally get that power price knocked down. We can even see a solar panel scrapped away and an off-world market lands. Very, very nice to be the first one to move yeah, into an off-world market, right. especially in a game where nobody is making electronics. It just makes it significantly harder for your opponent to get into it. However... Gameslayer has identified that an off-world would be very nice as well, and he has already purchased up the electronics he will need to establish one. One just has to wonder if he's going to have the time to go ahead and get there, especially as a dust storm is severely hurting his primary source of money, his food, right now. Very unfortunate for Gameslayer, that dust storm, and PB is taking advantage. He knows he has already invested all of the money he needs to to get his off-world operational, so he is committing every last cent he has into purchasing up Game Slayer's stock. And this is going to slow down Game Slayer's expansion as well. Game Slayer's going to have a much harder time pushing into an off-world if he's having to buy up his own stock before he can get there. And that's really what the game turns into in the late game, is who has that off-world and who can keep it running the best unless somebody can make a truly crazy hacker array play work in their favor, which I just don't see happening at all this game. Another auction comes out. We've already pushed to day five in this 1v1. One has to wonder if PB is going to let any of these go or any more of these go just so Game Slayer's stock price gets knocked down a little bit lower 
and he can finish off this game a little bit faster. He's going to let that one go for 14,000 over to Game Slayer. Just a simple Geotherm auction. Not a terribly big deal, as most players have pretty much already committed their tiles. Knowing that you have a claim committed to power really doesn't do the same thing in the late game that it does in the early game. It doesn't help you plan out what your eventual goal for your company is going to be. All right, almost all of Game Slayer's stock purchased up. Things aren't really looking pretty for him right now. He would have needed to push so far in order to actually finish off PB. We can see still needing $225,000 in order to manage to finish up this game. Whereas PB, he has managed to secure seven of Game Slayer stock, and he is only pushing to 77,000 to finish it up. He had already both defended his off-world and purchased another goon to defend it a second time. 80% through this shipment right now. I expect this game to end very, very quickly the moment that off-world sends. Let's see, we've got 5% left. Let's just see what happens. Also, we see the dynamite getting turned on Game Slayer's power, bringing his stock price down. There's the red button. That's going to be the victory. 2-1 over to PB in this best of three. Kind of shaky in game one, but showing a lot more dominance in games two and three. Founding second, making very similar plays to his opponent, but taking that slight edge in that extra claim, pushing harder on the auctions, being confident that he can use them well enough, that he won't have to worry so much about the debt, and taking a nice solid win in game number three. Whew. All right. Let's take a look at Black Market again right off the bat, because I wasn't focusing on that a whole lot that game, and I don't think either of our players were either because they were both scientific once again. Six black market purchases for PB. We saw the two EMPs coming down, shutting down food and power at solid times against his opponent, hitting five of his opponent's tiles with those EMPs. Two goon squads were purely pr to protect the offworld in the late game, and one mutiny. I'm trying to remember exactly where the mutiny was. I might have missed it. One mutiny likely going down on an opponent's tile in order to simply claim away some of their resources on perhaps one of these reactors in particular. Wouldn't have surprised me too much. Another option maybe was to take some power toward the end of the game, but I don't think that's what occurred. Whereas for Game Slayer, we saw one new claim. Big issue in a lot of ways, always, having to purchase that extra claim early. You do not have the cash for it most of the time. And it can definitely cause you problems. I think Game Slayer did all right with it this game, but it clearly wasn't quite enough to press through and maybe pay for its early $4,000 cost. Dynamite being purchased, most of that getting thrown at the offworld, I believe. And of course, one mutiny we saw take away in unspecified amount of glass toward the middle of the game from PB. I know we mutinied on the glass. Okay, the mutiny was on the Geo for PB. Interesting. I spotted that glass mutiny. It's hard to keep up with all the black market. All right, guys. Once again, we can see power making a bit of a big difference that game. PB selling a lot. Game Slayer not. So that really allowed PB to kind of catch up in stock price and kept him from bottoming out the way that Game Slayer did right in game number two and that allowed him making sure that his debt never got too out of control let him keep going with those auctions and keep pushing and pushing and pushing later in the game like we talked about get to those late stages take advantage of all those extra claims he had been acquiring so that was decently played by pb making about 180,000 on world 60,000 off world reasonable plays right there whereas game slayer he only managed to make about a hundred thousand on world not really what you're looking for most of that in food still having to buy a significant amount of water and not making a whole lot off the oxygen and fuel you have to wonder if maybe it would have been a bit better to move into water a bit more aggressively instead of when we saw the transition over to additional reactors just small things here and there that hurt and of course that dust storm toward the end of the game really sealing the deal by making food only produce at half rate not what you're looking for when you're relying on that to go ahead and win the game. We also see a lot of glass purchasing going on for Game Slayer throughout that game, kind of allowing PB to sell down his glass a bit more effectively and guaranteed he was making plenty of money off of it. And just a decent amount of money being made everywhere, but most of it honestly coming from this water 
these high water tiles, this one high water tile for PB doing tremendous work. Most of the time we saw it somewhere above 150 and usually kind of close to $200 a second off just this single tile. Maybe would have been a bit more prudent for Game Slayer to have secured it early on, knowing that he was going to be relying on purchasing water throughout that game. I think PB just doing a bit better job of understanding exactly how each player's economy was going to affect the game as it went forward and doing a better job of maneuvering into those valuable resources at the appropriate time. And that's going to let him take the best of three overall in game number three.